Welcome into this edition of Dolphins Today. I'm your host, Jake Ritma. Lots to get into around the Miami Dolphins because this could be a huge weekend in week 16 of the National Football League. Dolphins hosting the Cowboys. Nothing new there. But the Dolphins can clinch a playoff, clinch a playoff with a number of different scenarios, and some of them are a little bit uh, kind of complicated. You might need a pen and paper to write it all down. But the easiest one to understand, win and you're in. So here's who the Dolphins are taking on in Week 16. That's right, it's the Dallas Cowboys. Both teams 10-4 and four, and good versus good. If you missed our full preview, you got to check it out on the channel. But these are two high-powered offense, the best scoring offense against the second best scoring offense. And defensively, the Cowboys have been really good all season long. But the Dolphins, as of late, since about week nine, have been one of the best defenses in the National Football League. Miami favored by a point and a half at over-under at 51. So... The easiest scenario to remember for the playoff scenario, and if the Dolphins, in fact, can clinch a playoff spot, is win and you're in. That guarantees the Miami Dolphins will be a playoff team in 2023 is if you win and you're in. So remember that. Win and you're in. Now, things don't always go according to plan. I wish they did. But let's say some kind of horrible scenario happens where the Dolphins don't win. Here are the other clinching scenarios. And like I said, get out your pen and paper because I'm going to be quizzing everybody at the end of this one to make sure we all remember. If the Dolphins tie and Jacksonville loses, Miami's in. If the Dolphins tie, Indianapolis loses, and Houston loses, the Dolphins are in. Probably know what's coming next. If the Dolphins tie, Indianapolis loses or ties, and Cleveland loses, check the box, Miami's in. Houston ties, or no, if Miami ties and Houston loses or ties and Cincinnati loses or ties, the Dolphins are in. And last but certainly not least, if the Dolphins tie, Cincinnati loses or ties, Indianapolis loses or ties, the Dolphins are in. So if you're like me, you probably don't remember all those scenarios, so let's just keep it real. Scale it for me in the comments. 1 through 10, your confidence level in Miami clinching a playoff spot this weekend. The easiest scenario to remember, win and you're in. And then if not, refer back to the video because I can't even remember all of them. But obviously, a tie and a Jacksonville loss, that's one to remember, and so on and so forth. But let's keep it simple, stupid. Win and you're in. And here's what the playoff picture looks like right now. Division leaders. Baltimore at the very top, 11-3, who the Dolphins will play after the Cowboys in week number 17. But we're not looking ahead. Relax, Ritma. Then you got the Chiefs at 9-5, and five, the Jags at 8-6, and six, and then the wild card sets in. Browns, 9-5, and five, Bengals, 8-6, and six, both out of the AFC North. Indianapolis working through the AFC South, trying to catch Jacksonville. All things are yet to be determined, obviously. And then you got a lot of teams in the hunt with Houston, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and Denver, both 7-7. Seven and seven. And I know they're on the screen, so we'll show them some love, but Vegas at 6-8. and eight. And I'm not saying that last one. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. Get the graphic off the screen. I'm not saying they're in the hunt. They're, they're absolutely not. But you get the idea. The Dolphins are on the brink of clinching that playoff spot and will probably start to have a better idea of who they could be potentially playing if all goes according to plan as the season progresses. Now, as we progress on Dolphins today, I got to let you know our presenting sponsor for today. Huge shout out to Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And just when I thought it couldn't get more exciting, it does. It's the 12 day of, of Pickmas. That's right. Prize Picks is offering 12 unique promotions each day leading up to the Christmas holiday. So you got to sign into your app each and every day to see what's new. And to get started, you got to go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. It's the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. We'll put that link right in the comments of today's video because we love you and we care about you. And part of the 12 days of Picknas that are also so exciting, you'll find the Demons and Goblins. 
new from Prize Picks, you can make it easier or harder to win up to 100 times your money with the demons that are statistically harder to win. But each entry qualifies with higher payouts. Go to prizepicks.com to see for yourself. And as always, I'll give you a few picks here. You can join me or fade me to a more than 270 and a half yards passing. Dak Prescott, less than 276 and a half yards passing. And Raheem Mostert, 57 and a half yards rushing. Easy money there, taking more. Now, as we continue with more on the AFC playoff picture and the potential for who the Dolphins might be playing, you got to start to think, okay, if I had a perfect world, who would I want the Dolphins to play in that opening round? Well, obviously, that number one seed is the most coveted position because that'd be a first round bye. And to get to where the Dolphins want to go, they're obviously going to have to make some meaningful plays and have some big wins, but in that first round, let's get a little creative and have a little fun here and get a little hypothetical. Who do you want the Dolphins to play in the first round of the playoffs? And anybody's on the table, let me know. Do you want to see them play against a wild card team like perhaps maybe the Colts or the Browns or the Texans? There's a lot to be said out there. I don't think the Steelers are quite out of it yet. They're getting closer and closer. Denver's a potential team that the Dolphins could play in that opening round. But I'll tell you what, I think this Miami Dolphins team matches up great. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself. This is purely for fun, people. We're just having fun here. So don't yell at me in the comments. I'm not saying this is going to happen. But you look on paper who the Dolphins could have a field day against. It's the Indianapolis Colts. And while they've been a really surprising story, and in a lot of ways, you got to give Shane Steichen a ton of credit. In his first year as the head coach for the Colts, they've really overachieved to get to 8-6 and six this season. But they've been doing it by outscoring their opponents and not necessarily stopping their opponents. That Colts defense, not great. 27th scoring defense and 26th against the run, which tells me I think this Miami Dolphins team, especially at home, if they were to host a first-round playoff game, Against a wild card team like the Colts, I think they could run them out of the stadium and cruise to a victory. But again, I'm getting way ahead of myself. It's just the fun things we like to do this time of year as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. But let me know in the comments who you want to see in that first round of the playoffs. And again, remember, this weekend, the Dolphins can, in fact, clinch a playoff spot with a win over the Cowboys and some several other different scenarios. If they tie, Jacksonville loses, Dolphins tie, Indianapolis and Houston lose. Lots of different scenarios out there, but in the end, it's real simple. Win and you're in. Want to remind you to subscribe to the channel because we do this every day. We've got a Dolphins video for you every single day, and it's always a good time to subscribe to Dolphins Today because we're telling you about everything that's going on, including the latest episode of Hard Knocks. So did you watch the episode of Hard Knocks? It was episode five. Let me know in the comments, yes or no, because I've got five takeaways for you. And then I'll just warn you in advance, spoilers alert in these five takeaways, but still worth watching either way. Let's start with my first big takeaway from episode five. That is Mike McDaniel loves him some Eminem. He was bumping the Eminem music to begin the episode. And you got a look into how motivated, how uniquely driven Mike McDaniel is because he's watching film in his office at three in the morning after the Monday night collapse against the Titans. And with him blaring Eminem, it kind of gives you a look into his personality a little bit, and I think Omar Kelly put it best. Eminem is Mike McDaniel's angry music because, of course, Mike McDaniel and all the Dolphins were angry after that loss to the Tennessee Titans. But as I always say about hard, rocks, hard, hard knocks, it's interesting to see the coaches, players, and everything in between behind the scenes, and this was another good picture into how Mike McDaniel operates. Now, a fun dynamic in the episode of the Hard Knocks, episode five, was Zach Sealer and Christian Wilkins. 
They've been monsters in the middle of that defensive line all season long, but we got a glimpse into their personalities a little bit more, how excited they were to play together, and I love the behind-the-scenes and storytelling associated with Zach Sealer's journey, who I've said it time and time again on the show. He went from a walk-on in Division II football to one of the most impactful interior defensive linemen, and you got to know his family a little bit. Also crazy that he and his now wife lived in an RV in the woods when he was playing for the Baltimore Ravens because he didn't know week to week if he was going to continue to have a job. And the way his wife put it was awesome. They just wanted to be able to get up and go. So the guy literally lived in an RV for a lot of his NFL career, but we know what happened now. He's earned a three-year contract with the Dolphins and made a home in Miami. But him and Christian Wilkins, the salt and pepper, they are also singing Zach Brown band throughout the game. I mean, just great stuff there. I think you'll, if you haven't seen Hard Knocks yet in the episode five, you're going to love this component of the episode, hopefully as much as I did. Now, Braxton Berrios and Alex Earl. I think I'm inclined and probably obligated to talk about this because it was such a big part of the episode. And there wasn't anything bad with this. I just mentioned Braxton Berrios, heck of a wide receiver. Big, big, valuable asset for the Miami Dolphins. The punt returner does it, and the kick returner as well does it all. But Alex Earl is a TikTok famous, and the way she is able to galvanize an entire audience to the tune of 6 million followers blows my mind. She's got 6 million followers on the TikTok, and what's interesting about it is she allowed, or I shouldn't even say allowed, but utilized Braxton Berrios on some of the TikToks with plucking his eyebrows and all kinds of uh, funny behind-the-scenes stuff, and I guess that's what TikTok is for, but I think you'll enjoy that component of the episode as well, and maybe maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but uh, there is one thing, both Alex Earl and Braxton Berrios make a dynamic, famous couple, there is no doubt about it. And I love this part in the episode, Mike McDaniel in the crystal ball, in the heat of the moment against the Jets, predicts the 60-yard touchdown bomb to Jalen Waddell. He spoke it into existence. It was the kind of moment on Hard Knocks that I believe their producers and cameramen dream of because they've got the camera on Mike McDaniel, and he speaks it into existence. He says, I'm really visualizing the one-play drive here, inferring that the Dolphins were going to score on the first play of the drive, and sure enough, Tua goes up top to Jalen Waddell for that 60-yard touchdown against the Jets. My, oh my, that was awesome. I love that part of Hard Knocks because it shows you how brilliant of a mind Mike McDaniel has. And last but certainly not least, probably the best part, best part of the episode, Miss Martinez teaching math class and using the Dolphins statistics as the most influential and impactful learning tool for all the youngsters at her elementary school. And if you haven't yet seen Miss Martinez teaching a class, she does a fantastic job engaging with the youngsters and really taking knowledge from the football field, applying it to make the classroom setting more uh, lively, more enjoyable, the learning from it all. And I tell you what, I think every student deserves a teacher like Mary Martinez. And she tweeted this out, the secret is out, what a dream. So happy to have been a small part of this production, referring to episode five. Thank you, NFL Films, for showing the world a glimpse of what we do before and after each game. It's bigger than math. It's life. Because, again, she's a math teacher, and she uses Tyreek Hill statistics. She uses all kinds of Dolphins statistics in her teaching. And I'm telling you, it, is, it, makes, it makes you smile, and it makes your heart smile. It is grade A quality content. And she went on to say she loves sharing my passion for the Miami Dolphins and the NFL with her students. It's been so rewarding. We are learning, growing, and overcoming adversity each and every day. So shout out to Mary Martinez. I wish I had her as an elementary teacher growing up. So if you haven't watched it yet, that's what to be looking for. And if you have watched it, let me know what you thought of Episode 5 on Hard Knocks. 
let me know in the comments. Get out your red pen and let's grade the fifth episode of Hard Knocks together. A, B, C, D, or F.